Hello, good evening, uh, everybody. Um, I would like to present you some of my uh, works over the last, uh, I think, 10 years. I selected some works that are talking about uh, or uh, audience uh, concentrated works, yeah. And it's all a little bit about seeing and being seen. Um, the audience in some way, the audience as a performative uh, body that I'm really interested in. I would like to start with, with, with an old project in some way. And I would like to start with a project uh, in some way on a, on a high level. Let's see. Um, it's, it's called See You. At 3,666 meters in the Austrian Hohentauern Mountains lies the summit of the Groß Venediger. It is one of the highest and most famous Austrian mountain peaks. According to the legend, the name comes from the overwhelming view as far as Venice. The Groß Venediger was first mentioned in a document in seven, in, uh, in, uh, hmm. The Groß Venediger was first mentioned in a document in 1797, but the first ascent took place only in 1841. 175 years later, on 10 July 2011, I climbed it as part of the project SEAL. So here you can see me on the top of these mountains. The starting point for the tour was the Kürsinger Hütte at 2,500 uh, meters. I stayed at the hut the day before and celebrated the opening of CEO. We toasted the art project with wine in the wooden hut of the former cable car station, the old cable car station. The next day, I looked south from the summit, you can see it here on the, uh, on the picture, in a beautiful sunshine. It was a beautiful day. Beautiful mountains were visible, but no Lagoon City, not Venice. Geographical investigations prove that the far view from the Gross Venediger to Venice is impossible, even under the best visibility conditions, because the line of sight is interrupted by various mountains. The legend is the fairy tale. Just over a month earlier took place the opening of the 54th Biennale di Venezia. There too, the opening was a celebration in a let's say, more pompous and po uh, prominent manner. Markus Schinwald exhibited in the Austrian pavilion and set up a white labyrinth hanging from the ceiling, where he placed inside his paintings and sculptures. In between, there was a small sign saying, the video recording is being made by Hannes Eger for the project CEO, a visual link from the Ghost Venediger to Venice. A surveillance camera was mounted on a steel beam above the sign, which transmitted in the real time to the Kürsinger Hütte on the Gross Venediger. From June until the end of the Biennale in November, the former top station of the cable car was equipped with a satellite system, a monitor, a bench, a project descriptions, um, and for 24 hours a day, the camera transmitted live from Venice to the Gross Venediger. Finally, the legendary view from the, Venice to, uh, from the Gross Venediger to Venice became real. However, it was not the St. Mark's Square or the Alto Bridge that was shown, but a section of the installation in the Austrian pavilion made by Markus Schinwald. The most exciting part, from my point of view, of this transmission was not, were not the white walls and the old oil paintings on the background, but the visitor who walked through the exhibition. They stopped, they looked around, just walked by, took notes, talked to each other, took photographs, or did other things. Some made selfies with the picture or even they touched it. Sitting on the bench on a 2,500 meters above sea level in front of the monitor and looking into the Venice. 200 kilometers away, the viewers waited for the decisive, decisive moment. What happened? Who, who comes next? What does the person who just comes around the corner do? There was a, an analogy between the audience at the Kürsinger Hütte and the one in Venice that I had not considered at the beginning of the project. 
you have to know uh, you take more or less three hours to ascend to the hut. And most of the people of the Alpinists uh, are carrying, of course, uh, backpacks and arrive there uh, quite exhausted. Whenever they visit the, tra the transmission room of CU on this Kursinger Hütte, they sat down on the bench in front of the monitor and watched the chains in Venice. And they saw mainly this, uh, something like really close to them. They saw walking people, a lot of them also equipped with backpacks or bags and quite tired because the Austrian pavilion is located in the back of the Giardini. Up to there, the majority of the visitors has already seen a lot of art and walked a few kilometers through Venice. So tired hiking people in the mountains looked at tired walking people in an exhibition. Now I would like, so this, this is me on the top of the mountains, uh, looking south. On the next picture, here you can see uh, this old cable station uh, that makes part of this Kursinger Hütte. This was this, uh, this uh, transmission room with the satellite. And inside uh, was possible to see uh, in real time uh, Venice on this monitor. It's me. And here we see some stills from the video, uh, from the video transmissions. We see here some people in Venice, in the Giardini, in Schinbar's labyrinth, going through the installation with backpacks. Okay, now I would like to talk about another project. So um, it's maybe it's not, yes, I start to talk about one project, but it's more a series of projects and uh, for my development as an artist or for my praxis it's quite important because it's it's an ongoing project uh, but the starting point was was quite clear and it started with this uh, platform i called it um, in 2012 also a dance floor in some way one day uh, one year later in uh, 2012 i was invited to contribute a for the exhibition Panorama, New Art in South Tyrol in the Franzens Fest Fortress. With one of the curators, uh, Denis Isaia, I had, a I had long uh, discussions about the work. And he asked me to make a work or to, to develop a work on and with the audience. Uh, the result or one part of the result was the installation uh, Perform Yourself consisting of an outdoor stage measuring about 4.4 meters, a large format drawing printed on aluminum that could be understood as an instruction for action, and a small booklet that collected instructions on movement sequences in the rooms, in the exhibition rooms, in the other exhibition rooms. The accompanying uh, booklet described the project as follows. The Art and Mediation Project, Perform Yourself, by Hannes Seger for Panorama 4, invites visitors to enter into a physical dialogue with the site and the works. By imitating given sequences of movement, the visitors become moving sculptured, thus suspending the classical position of the passive audience. The central location of the artistic intervention is a dance floor, this one here on the picture, as is customary at a been pastoral festivals. At this place, the visitors can dance, waltz, tango, zumba, belly dance, break dance, or other dances to the heart's content. Uh, so this was the first work in this series of, uh, of works uh, where I started to include uh, instructions. Uh, and during this period of, or this three months uh, period of the exhibition, various actions around Perform Yourself took place mainly on this uh, dance floor over here. So we invited DJs, we invited um, folk groups and so on and so on. Now I can show a picture. This was a dancing group. Uh, they performed on, on this uh, dance floor. Um, in the same uh, year, 2012, some months later, I have been in Marseille because I have been invited to a, a festival in Marseille called Poetry Festival Marseille, and it took place in the Met Gallery. Um, 
the, you can imagine the audience sat on their chairs arranged in rows in the gallery. I stood in front of the audience and asked as a performer, it was a performance, I asked for a short a moment of patience as I had to get an important object from the car in front of the gallery. So I had to go outside. I disappeared for a few minutes and then came back, uh, came back uh, with a headlight, with a spotlight in its original packing. I asked a man sitting in the first line to unpack and set it up. A second person helped him. Meanwhile, I made a base out of wooden planks, with, which was about 100 per 60 centimeters large and 30 centimeters high. Let's see, I think I have a picture. Yes, that's me arranging this, uh, yeah, this structure. Then I distributed 15 number, numbered letters to the audience. In the meantime, the spotlight was set up, connected to the electricity and illuminated the pedestal. I took off my sweater. Underneath, I wore a t-shirt with the inscription, perform yourself. Then I placed myself against the left gallery wall and asked the person with the number one on the ladder to open it. Inside was an instruction for action, which the person carried out on the pedestal. Then the person with the number two followed the third one, and so on and so on. The instructions for action were partly written and partly drawn up and contained both movement sequences and texts be spoken aloud. Some of the performers, the, the audience performers, followed strictly the instructions, other interpreted them freely other, or rewarded them. At the end of the performance, I clapped the hand to the audience and to the performers. The applause that followed was for all of us, for me, for the performers, for the aud audience, for all. It was a collective experience. In the follow, uh, let's see here, can, we can see a picture. Yes, this is one of these uh, performances. Uh, you can see this woman with the instruction uh, uh, holding in the hands and me on the left side uh, of the gallery space. Um, in the following, following years, I created uh, a series of different perform yourself pieces. Each of them dealt with instruction for the audience. I experimented uh, a lot with, uh, with a wide range of content and form. For an exhibition at the Stellwerk in Kassel, for example, I used a small yellow book with drawing instruction. For an exhibition in Turin, it was a jukebox that after entering a number belonging to a drawing, called, the, the jukebox called for action in a loud voice. Or I used specifically selected dance music uh, for, for other um, of these, uh, let's call them, uh, perform yourself works. Uh, then the next one I would like to introduce is um, is the project Hotel Cubo. It um, was done in 2014. Um, uh, Frida Carazzato, one of the curators of the museum in, Bo in Bolzano, here we are in my city, invited me in 2014 to exhibit uh, at this small museum. It's called Cubo Garuti. It is a sort of mini museum, a sort of mini museum in the popular Don Bosco district of Bolzano. Developed, so the, the structure itself, it was developed in 2003 by the artist Alberto Garuti. That's why the structure is called Cubo Garuti. The three by three meters exhibition room placed on two sides is equipped in the same way as the museum exhibitions room in the city center. So the museum, the museum, it's in the city center and this, in the, uh, this uh, small museum, it's uh, in this popular restrict on the peripheric side of Bolzano. So it means that the same floor and the same wall covering, the lightning, fire protection technology, air conditioning, uh, the alarm system, it's the same in the small one as in the big museum in the center. The Don Bosco district in the south of Bolzano was built in the 1920s during the fascist era for the Italian factory workers who moved to Bolzano in this age. For a long time, it was an almost exclusively Italian speaking residential area away from the city center. 
in the 1990s and 2000s, it's, uh, it attracted media attention more with negative headlines than with culture. Since then, the Kubo Goruti was has uh, been uh, an attempt to combine the high culture of the city center with the popular neighborhood. My concern for the Kubo Goruti was to revitalize it and to bring people from outside or from other uh, areas of the city to this uh, Don Bosco restrict and to spend there some time, if possible, at least one night. So I, I invented this project, uh, Hotel Kubo. The Hotel Kubo was open from April to June 2014. It consists of a, uh, of a bed with bladding, a bedside table, light, coat hooks, heavy black curtains to darken the windows, a map of the hotel surrounding and an audio guide to the neighborhood. In addition, an overnight kit with towel, slippers and blindfold was available uh, to buy at the museum. The wet room, the wet room with a small sink and a chemical toilet was set up outside, just behind the Kubo Garuti. I think maybe we hear, yeah, we cannot, yeah, you can see it on the left side of the photo, the toilet. The hotel could be booked for the duration of the exhibition. And after only a few days, the mini hotel, uh, uh, yeah, probably in one of the most unattractive places in the tourist destination of South Tyrol was fully booked. The curator of the project, Frida Carazzato, described her tasks in the catalog published after the exhi exhibition as follows. My role is that of a gatekeeper. I have to take care of the reception for the guests, and accompany them to the room, explain the function of the keys, the lights, the bathroom, and the times of check-in and the check-out. I also show them the restaurants nearby, and above all, I have to register them. The name, the surname, place, uh, and date of birth, uh, and to, uh, she had to, to make a photocopy of the identity card. So it's, in some way, it was a real, a really small, but a real uh, hotel. And the guests in the Hotel Kubo experienced Don Bosco and felt partly exposed because of these uh, big windows. And also the residents of Don Bosco, especially the immediate neighborhood of Kubo Garuti, which is installed in the inner courtyard of a larger residence complex, experienced the guests and were exposed to their looks. Of course, there was also a meeting. For example, hotel guests told that their chi children were playing with the neighborhood children. Others were allowed to park their bicycles in the nearby garage in rainy weather. Still others were invited for a coffee, for a coffee in, in um, one of the surrounding apartments. The audio guide, on the other hand, was designed as a city tour and could be borrowed by hotel guests as well as other visitors in the nearby bar. So now I can show you some pictures. Here you see this, this courtyard and the Hotel Kubo. This is the, the, yeah, the inside of the Hotel Kubo with the bed and so on. A guest. Okay, now I would like to talk about uh, another project in Berlin. It's uh, called Sculpture Park M. M stays for Marzahn. Marzahn is also a popular um, neighborhood a little bit outside of Berlin. In 2017, uh, a new addition of the gallery hotel, like in the Hotel Kubo, was to, to take place in the gallery M in the Berlin district of Marzahn. Karin Scheel, the director of the Municipal Gallery, invited me to realize the project in connection with and as a commentary on the International German Garden Show in Marzahn that was made in this year. Also, the project's planning was already well advanced. It could not take place in the end for insurance reasons, as it was not possible to let people stay overnight in the exhibition room. So it's, it wasn't, yeah, it was impossible impossible but the projects uh, but uh, the projects Kultur and Park M realized instead was not less exciting I would say. The press released promised a uh, sculpted trail on the Marzahn Promenade. This is this, this quite big street in front of the gallery uh, and on this Marzahn Promenade um, 
yeah, this trail um, was made with 20 world fam famous sculptures, such as Michelangelo's David, Giacometti's Luomo che Camina, Miron's Disco Ball, August Rodin's Marriage Age, and others. In addition, the creation of an associate uh, visitor center in the gallery M was announced with information and interactive installations around the works of art. So let's see, this, these are this, let's call it on the picture, you can see this, this, this sort of uh, sculptures. And this is this visitor center, it's written, uh, yes, visitor center. Uh, sp strictly speaking, however, there were only yellow stickers on the floor inviting passersby passers to assume the poster of the cited uh, sculptures and become a sculpture themselves. In the visitor center, I negotiated the concept of sculpture and the role of the spectators in a variety of ways. The central installations, visitor center, uh, it's called visitor center, was a four meter per six meter black seating furniture. which could also function as a stage or pedestal with six accompanying uh, headphones, which were playing with a, uh, with a 20 minute audio piece. The specially created work was a reflection on the role of visitors in exhibitions. The voice to be heard led, similar to an audio guide in a museum around the setting furniture, prompting them to assume certain postures, repeating short texts and also lie down. In, term of in terms of content, the play referred, among other things, to the philosopher Boris Croy, the play, play Publicums Beschimpf from Peter Handke, and the assassination of the Russian ambassador uh, Andrei Karlov in a gallery in Ankara in 2016. So this is the, the point of view from outside in this visitor center. Then here we can see the visitor center inside. And on this, uh, on this picture, you can see a little, in some way, uh, this pedestal, this central work, this central audio performative uh, work uh, in the middle of this, this visitor center. Um, since 2016, I have developed several audio or audience performances, like I call them. Uh, they are audio pieces in which more or less performative instructions are combined with narratives. Um, now I would like to let you hear one of these pieces. Um, the piece is called Window Performance. It is quite new. It was created in May 2020. And in some way, yeah, I would say it definitely talks about uh, the pandemic and uh, the lock, uh, lockdown. So. Go to a window of your choice. Stand in front of the window and look out. Gaze into the distance. Now raise your right hand. Stretch out your index finger and slowly move your finger towards the window pane. Touch the glass lightly. Now press your finger more strongly against the window. Feel the pressure. Remove the finger. Take a close look at the window pane. See the print of your finger. Now take the other hand. Spread your fingers and guide the hand with the inside towards the window. At a distance of a few centimeters from the window pane, stop. Can you already feel the resistance of the window? 
Now press your hand against the glass. You should feel the entire palm of your hand pressing against the window. Look at your fingers. Now look through your spread fingers. Remove your hand from the window. Stand upright and look closely at the glass. Did your hand leave marks? Bend your forearms and lift them up so that the outside of your forearms is facing forward. Bring your forearms up against the glass. They should be shoulder width apart. Fingers look up, elbows down. Clench your hands into fists. Press the outside of your forearms against the window. Now push your head forward so that you press your forehead against the window. Tense your fists, forearms, shoulders and neck muscles. Stay in this position. Feel the tension. Release yourself from the window. Relax your upper body. Now kiss the window and do so in such a way that the breath of your lips remains on the glass. Look closely at the marks of the kiss. Can you see your lips? Did you kiss with your mouth open or closed? Take a small step back. Now stretch out your right index finger again. If you're left-handed, use your left hand. Draw the following letters on the window with your finger. H E L L O Wait a moment. Continue writing now. W O R L D Exclamation mark. Hannes Egger. Window performance. 2020. Thank you for performing it, or also for listening it. Um, this is a piece I did in May uh, during the yeah the last weeks of the of the lockdown, and also I started to yeah to work on this lockdown. I think so for me. Uh, I think for a lot of people it was really uh, yeah. Uh, a quite a new situation and experience um, and I'm not so yeah so sure about the results till now now we are on a second lockdown in Italy and um, for me it so as a form of my personal reflection uh, I created a work in Milan in Milan because uh, Milan is in some way it was in the springtime one of the first cities uh, with really 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 heavy problems uh, with COVID-19 and also Milan is the center of the financial and economic center of Italy and that's why I decided to make this in, in some way performative work or I call it a performative work uh, in Milan and I, I decided to do it uh, during the art week yeah, the art week in Milan is uh, the or the app yeah it's in the september usually uh, of course uh, in 2020 it 
it wasn't done. Yeah, it was. Uh, it, it 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 started to be. The, it uh, it wasn't a fair. It was only online, and I decided to make this work and um, um, in the published space. Um, I involved a, a truck um, to go around in the city to cross the city for a whole uh, week. And now I would like to show uh, you the video. So this is the week long, or oh, this is an instruct, instruction of this week long going performance in Milan in September. And it is also the starting point for the exhibition in Ustin at Laben at the House of Arts. Um, the exhibition is called Everything Has Changed, Nothing Has Changed. So this is for the summertime, it was this a little bit my feeling with this uh, COVID-19 pandemic with the lockdown. So it seemed for me that in some way the world is in some way changing and on the other side, it's not changing. I think it's up to us uh, what we are going to do with this really new experience. And that's why uh, I or we together, we decided to use this video as starting point for the uh, exhibition in uh, Ustinat Laben. Uh, the exhibition uh, starts this evening. This is the opening now. And uh, the exhibition starts with an open call. What we are going to do is to collect uh, stories, experience from people about uh, this year. 2020 is certainly a really a special year, uh, not only in Czech Republic, but all over the world. Uh, we probably will uh, remember this this year uh, all over the world in in some way it, it it's it's a really special uh, period and we would like to collect these experiences we would like to collect um, the stories written uh, yeah written down or send it to us by email or letters or on facebook or whatever and we are uh, going to put this um, let us these stories in the exhibition. They should be shown online and uh, and in the gallery. The gallery at the moment it's closed, but when it's going to open, we, we can show all uh, them also in the gallery. And uh, some of this 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 uh, text, these experiences, we will uh, pass to. Uh, artists like performers, musicians, video makers, whatever, and they will going to um, interpret them and to give their own spirit on them. And these uh, videos, the results uh, are going to be videos and they will be shown in the exhibition too. 
Um, it's a work in progress. It's also a, pro a work in progress because this uh, collaboration is important. Um, it's also a work in progress because we don't know what's, what's going on. At the moment we have the lockdown, but we don't know what's going on next week and the week after. So in some way everything is changed, nothing is changed, we don't know. And this is the starting point for the exhibition. It is very important to mention that we uh, we're working on the exhibition from beginning of the year mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. the first discussions, uh, also the first concept of the exhibition, very different one, mm -hmm. uh, uh, was sent by you, uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, January, February 2020. And then, uh, of course, we were influenced by the situation mm -hmm. in, I would say, in several waves because uh, uh, some, sometimes the situation was more optimistic than after very uh, pessimistic. So it means that we, uh, it was necessary to react on ongoing situation with COVID uh, and uh, restrictions uh, related to uh, pandemic situation. Uh, very important moment uh, which we should mention is that you as a, a performing artist uh, based on collaboration with the public and site specific um, um, situations you couldn't come mm -hmm. which means that the whole uh, exhibition uh, process uh, was uh, made in distance. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think also for you uh, it was a new Quite situation. Mm -hmm. And then uh, when became clear that it will be impossible for you to come and to uh, to collaborate uh, physically with the uh, local audience, as was planned at the very beginning, from the very beginning, uh, we decided uh, together to find a special form of the exhibition uh, to give you possibility to participate mm -hmm. and also to react on the situation that we didn't know and we still don't know if it will be possible to enter to the gallery. So it means that if uh, it will be possible for audience to come and to show uh, the, uh, to see the exhibition in in uh, the House of Arts. So it means, uh, uh, from my point of view, mm -hmm. that the format of the exhibition became a, a theme. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, 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 yes. So it means that we are now working. We are really focused on the format of the exhibition. We are developing it and also uh, we, uh, this kind of format is a reaction on the situation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and it gives you possibility to communicate without your present. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, we establish two levels of communication. One uh, level you already described is uh, uh, focus on the audience, so mm -hmm. on people which probably uh, would come to the gallery if the situation uh, could be uh, like always is. Uh, so those people are invited by you, by open call, to tell us, to write us their stories, uh, especially, I would say, personal stories, which are related uh, to 2020 and to their experiences. Uh, not just, not necessarily with COVID situation. It can be also focus on another um, uh, issues, uh, another items, but it should be somehow connected with uh, their personal life during uh, 2020. Uh, it is one level, I would say, communication between gallery 
and mm -hmm. visitors which in this situation can't come they can't enter to the to the gallery space but uh, very important is also uh, the second level or another level which is focus on institutions and also uh, uh, people artists which can't continue in their practice in their everyday i would say work because the institutions are closed uh, without touch with audience and artists they can't perform in in, in theaters and and um, uh, orchestra and, 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 and so on so it means that uh, there is also a communication between those people and institutions and and gallery so it means that the gallery is something like meeting point uh, and gallery should be always like a meeting point but in this case it's more uh, mm -hmm online meeting point or a virtual meeting point to get uh, visitors, institutions and artists together yeah. and to give them a uh, possibility to communicate. Uh, so this is the format I would say and now we are a little bit waiting what will happen what this format will bring to you as artist for next development of the project uh, because without a reaction of people and without the reaction of institutions we can't realize uh, uh, the whole project in 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 the full uh, format i would say or full version so this is a, a brief reflection from point of view of curator Okay, maybe we can make this part in a sort of talk. Hmm, I think it would be nice. Yeah, we can, we can, yeah. Because it is, uh, I mean, all the, the whole project is a talk between us and, and the, the whole team. So it's, it's, a collect, it's, it's also a, a, a collective work in some way, so. It is also important to mention then the production team. Yeah, exactly, because uh, it, it's, uh, it's a really a very active part. position in the process of creating and and uh, organizing of the exhibition because you are not here, you are not present. So it means that you uh, give a, a part of artistic responsibility to a uh, gallery team because they will, uh, they will realize some steps without your present here. And uh, uh, we probably should also mention uh, uh, the last uh, level of the exhibition, which we are planning now. Uh, of course, we don't know if it will be possible to realize it because we are we will wait for material which we would get from from visitors, from participants. But it is a book uh, okay. which should consist from. Uh, letters from the stories of uh, visitors of audience and uh, I think it is a really interesting format mm -hmm. uh, for for us what do you think about this uh, format and for about this possibility to to work during the exhibition but also after because mm -hmm. it will be necessary to to edit the book so it means that it takes some time mm -hmm. what do you think about this format uh, i think it's really interesting because i think it's um, in, in some way it's <laughs> the, the, the the whole exhibition it's not a classical exhibition so it means we are working step by step in a really unknown situation we are trying to take really serious this situation and to react on it. And uh, on the other hand, uh, or as, the, as the last uh, step, let's say like this, uh, we are thinking about to publish a book and the book is a really classical um, format. Um, and uh, this, so in this moment, it gets all, everything, it, it, it becomes really physically 
again. So a book is a really physical thing. And with this physical, classical uh, format, we are able, if it works, to collect the whole experience. I think so. It means we doesn't only uh, collect experience of, so on one hand, we are collecting our experience, or my experience as an artist, the, uh, your experience as a creator, maybe the experience of the team, because it makes part of the whole project, uh, the experience of the people that are sending the letters, uh, the institution's experience. And so uh, maybe we are able to, um, yeah to to tell uh yeah to connect all these different levels together and i think it could uh yeah as a result it could be really interesting uh i would also mention in this context the institutional experience because uh, all uh, all cultural institutions uh, galleries museums they are now searching for the new way of communication because they are they are limited, they are locked, uh, they are under the pressure uh, of restrictions, but still they have to keep their function and they have to develop strategies how to communicate with the public and also uh, how to continue uh, in their activities as a part of society, which is completely. Uh, um, I, I would say it's a, it's a crucial point now for the art institutions because uh, one could tell that if the institutions are closed, then their position in society will disappear. Exactly. Uh, and and it is a big it is a big danger for the whole uh, cultural life or a whole cultural structure, but also for society because if you if the the power and influence of cultural institutions will disappear. Yeah, that's a crucial point. What, sure. what could happen? You know? So it means that for institutions, it is uh, really a crucial point uh, to find a way uh, how to react on this situation and how to keep the position within society. Yeah, and I think it's important to experiment with these formats and to try and to be, yeah, in some way to be free and to experiment it, to try it out and to make new experiences. So it's, an, it's a new situation. It's difficult that everybody of us knows, uh, but in some way we have to react. And uh, I think with this exhibition, we are trying to react on several levels with uh, different partnerships, uh, uh, co-authorities and so, and so on. And uh, I would like to ask you about your experience with the working with the uh, social media and with the communication channels, mm -hmm. uh, because Gallery of course has them for a long time. Uh, but uh, before coronavirus, we were working with them mostly as uh, with the info uh, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. channels. But now uh, I think the situation has changed and mm -hmm. we are, uh, we are uh, pushed to uh, use them much more as real channel for cultural production, not just as an info, but really like a format for cultural production. Uh, could you explain your experience uh, regarding this uh, issue? Because it is implemented to the body of your exhibition. Of course. So um, for me also, as, as you are mentioning it, um, it, it changed a little bit uh, my point of view on the social media. So for me, before it was more or less only an information uh, channel. Yeah. But it's not true because the channel, it creates always content. I mean, McLuhan said it, so it's, it's quite clear, but uh, we are also good in forgetting things and uh, mainly in, in fast things. And I think uh, we have, or we started, or I started uh, to think it in a more, uh, yeah, uh, 
in a more large way with this lockdown in the springtime. So I started also, so I decided, so I mean the, uh, the audio piece you he heard before, I never published on, um, on, on the social media. I, I did another work and this I published in the, in the first weeks of the lockdown. And it had, it's had a lot of success because a lot of medias all over Europe published it. So it was also a form for me to communicate with, uh, with the world, with the audience, with also with curators. So I felt this, it, it was, a really a strong moment yeah i was close in the house um and it wasn't allowed to go out and uh, the only channel to communicate the, the museums were closed all the exhibitions were closed there was a week uh, full of uh, emails uh, saying okay we postpone this uh, exhibition or no we cancel it and so it was a difficult moment like it is now and uh, this was in this moment a good way for me to work with it and also I'm, I'm as a performative uh, artist I'm really interested maybe I'm not so interested in the body itself I'm more interested in the relation and uh, for me was the question how can I do a performative work uh, also in the social distance so this was a little bit the challenge and as I'm working for a longer time with these audio performances, uh, I thought, okay, let's try it out. And I, I had my success in some way with it, and it was really interesting. So some people sent me videos or photos, uh, and they said, okay, it was great to do something else because we were closed in our houses, in our kitchens, and it, it's maybe interesting to feel it or do, do something else in this space we are knowing so, so, so well. So I think of, yeah, medias, uh, we have to use them. And, and it's a channel not only for communication, but it's also a channel of producing art and culture. In this context, I would like to ask you, if the, if the, if the situation uh, uh, with the corona restrictions would, would uh, uh, change, let's say, during January, uh, yeah. would you come or not? You know, because uh, <laughs> your exhibition will will uh, uh, go on till the end of February, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and there is that there are already planned the steps how the exhibition will be developed. Because mm -hmm. first of all, we have to collect stories. If, uh, if we have to collect the furniture from the institutions, uh, uh, from the closed institutions. So it means that the, uh, the gallery, inside of the gallery, which will be visible through uh, gallery windows, uh, the performative sculpture will appear slowly uh, in cooperation with the, uh, another institutions, which are now already closed. Uh, then we have to ask uh, a selected artist for participation, for interpretation of, of the stories, of the letters. And probably during January, we will uh, publish again at the gallery the first interpretation in video form. And so it means that it is planned. We, we, we know what we would like to do of course, if we will get inputs, if we will get uh, the letters, if we will have a material uh, to work with. And what about you? Uh, hmm. Hmm. Uh, I mean, okay, on, uh, uh, as, uh, yeah, for the moment I would say I would like to come because I would like to, to see the room and especially I would like to smell the furniture. I would like to have in the hand these letters yeah because it, it's another feeling I think yeah, I would like to feel the space maybe not yeah the space and the works and they are it is obviously connected yeah but um, when you put 
when you made the question, so my, my first thing in mind was I would like to smell it, yeah, because the smell it's a really a close thing, yeah, and I would like to, of course, I mean, it's also interesting to make a project in this way, so because I'm working a lot with instructions, and in my instructions, uh, there is, uh, I mean, uh, you can follow it or not, or you can follow it partly, or you can understand or misunderstand or misunderstand or whatever. So, um, so I'm, I'm I'm also interested in the process. I'm not able to control everything. Uh, that's interesting for me, also for the, this whole project. And in this whole project, is it like this? So this is this is one hand. But uh, I would say, so from my feeling, I I would really like. To see it, to feel the, the exhibition. Of course, you are uh, during the whole uh, exhibition uh, process. You are decision maker. You are giving us uh, info information how to continue, what to do. Uh, but you know there is a really uh, uh, large space for uh, team of of the gallery how they fill uh, your instructions. And the question is, if your present wouldn't change situation too much, you know, if you will come. This is, this is my question. You know, I, I also don't know how to react if, if this possibility would be uh, realistic. Okay, I would say I would like to come on the last day. So not to change nothing. So because I think it's not good, of course, my presence would change the whole process. That, that's clear. Only to entering the door, it, it will change. So it changes in some way the energy or it changed in, in some way also the, uh, the relation with the team and so, it, surely. It's a social thing. Uh, I would say I would like uh, to come the last day not to change nothing so it's more like so uh, as a visitor because uh, as i already mentioned uh, the last day of the exhibition it will be not the end of the process because all of us we hope uh, that uh, the material which we get uh, will be good enough uh, to present a book and also, on the other hand, the book wouldn't be uh, focused just on the letters because, uh, as you mentioned, it also would have a uh, capacity to document the whole uh, process of, of uh, exhibition making. Uh, so it means that, okay, there will be the, the end of the exhibition term uh, inside of the gallery, but the 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 pro project would continue. Uh, do you already have idea about the the book? Because there will be another problem, which is a language. Uh, the most of letters uh, uh, we will get uh, probably in Czech language. Of course, we have also uh, the English version of Open Call, but. I think that we should expect uh, much uh, more uh, letters in Czech language. So do, did you think about the situation, how you as an artist will participate with the locals, with the people which will be active in the making of the publication? How will you uh, cooperate with them? Mm especially regarding selection of the, of the letters, you know. <laughs> okay, so you mean I'm not, as I'm not able to read and to understand Czech language, so it means that I'm not even able to understand the content of the letters. Of course, someone... Of can course, you can, you can interpret it to you, but there are some I oh. important... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, it's like sure. a quality of language and... Of course. So I, I would say, as we are going to take really serious the situation now, I would like to take as serious um, these letters, these experiences. So it means uh, if someone feels 
or has the necessity or whatever to write it in a certain language. So I think this is the most felt language and in this way it's the right language. So I think it's not a, a thing to translate. So I would prefer in this context and I hope we are going to get a lot of contributions for Mustinet Laden and surrounding and the Czech Republic. So I, I think um, yeah, it would, so for me, I think it's, um, it would be nice of, or it would be better for the project to have a lot of local inputs. So, and in this way, I, I would say to keep it in the original uh, language. So, and then if someone, something comes from outside, it's good, it's fantastic, it's all great. And there we could work in the same way. So, I mean, I'm, I'm really conscious about this translation problem. So I'm, I'm living, I grew up in, a, in an area with different languages, yeah. And I know how complicated all this translation stuff is. Uh, uh, and uh, I mean, the, the language it has to do with the way someone is thinking or opposite way, I, I, they are connected. So, and especially with, with strong feelings. And I think and this 2020 is a year with strong feelings and we are collecting in some ways experiences. This means strong feelings. Uh, I think they, they should remain in the language uh, as they were felt. Uh, you mentioned your uh, experience with the uh, bile uh, uh, lang language uh, uh, life in the society which is dealing with more languages because you are from South Tyrol, uh, the, the country which was for a long time part of Austria and uh, during the 20th century the borders has changed and now it is part of Italy. By the way, it was one of the uh, re uh, reasons why I invited you uh, to Mustin and Labem because in in some uh, in some uh, in in some way our historical experience is similar. But during the the process of uh, exhibition making, this uh, topic disappeared because of uh, corona situation and because of another uh, issues were uh, and at the moment much more important to react uh, on, on them. But I would like to ask you uh, now in, in the situation when all of us, we are somehow locked in our locations mm -hmm. uh, and on the other hand, we are much more related and much more depend on communication via uh, online uh, social uh, media channels, uh, which is uh, of course something which don't know borders, because uh, this is not a physical uh, way of communication. So this is, I, I would say, contradictory situation between our uh, uh, location, which is really now much more uh, strict, we can't move, every travels are much uh, more difficult than before, but we are connected uh, uh, with our neighbors, but also uh, within the world we are uh, digital uh, tools. This kind of experience, what, uh, how you feel it? What, uh, uh, th is there any movement is there some changes uh, or it is just from your point of view a time of shortcut no, I, okay. it, will, mm -hmm. it will come again very soon or what, what is what is happening i i think or i believe that it's it's not a shortcut and it's not the pandemic or the lockdown or whatever. I think uh, it shows us, so this period, it shows us quite well how our world works. Yeah, we are connected, so we are using now a lot of technologies. Uh, the, the technologies weren't in, invented for this moment now, but we are using uh, existing 
uh, technologies, uh, uh, existing knowledge also. So I think this moment shows us quite well how our work, how we uh, constructed our world and how we are living this world in some way. So in a more conscious way, because we have more time maybe to think about and we are not so disrupted by other things, I, I believe. Yeah? And uh, I mean, uh, all the economy is, works like this. Yeah? It's not important where you are producing, where you are doing, where you are sitting. Yeah? The only thing it's important that you don't have to pay a lot of taxes. So uh, our, our world is Amazon. It's, it's making uh, <laughs> a lot of money at the moment. Yeah? And it, it, it's clear because this is it, uh, in this way, our world is, uh, is constructed. Yeah? And I, I really believe that um, we are thinking a lot about borders and nationalities, uh, but this is a thing in our heads and it's not uh, actual anymore. These are old concepts. Yeah, we are, we are, or a lot of us, we are quite conservative. So it means we would would like to keep the things going on like we are used to. But I think that these are these are old concepts, quite really old concepts. Yeah, and it's not the reality. The reality is a really connected uh, world, uh, as you before described it, uh, connecting singular people on uh, different levels. I think that's it, yeah, but not the political situation. It's not on this point and also the society maybe not. Uh, the most connected thing is obviously the economic um, uh, itself. So, um, yeah, that's, that's a little bit so, but, but I think it's the question, so it depends. This, this is a crisis. This crisis shows us um, how this, this world works, yeah? Uh, and in, in a crisis, I think we can ask if it's good or if it's not good, because it's, it's show, shown more clearly. And uh, this is a little bit also my, my question with, with the performance in Milan and also the question I have to this exhibition or to this uh, project itself. I, I'm not sure, yeah? So for me, it's, it's the question if we are changing, if we are not changing. So it, it seems to me that at the moment the world is quite open so it can have there can happen a lot of things and uh, but things are not happening we are going to make happen things uh, also when we do nothing they happen but also doing nothing means to make happen something so i think this is a crucial moment and we have to think about what we are going to do and and how we want to have our future or so we are constructing in this time or the future is going to be constructed in this time i think and that's a little bit the question i have so i'm i'm, I'm not so sure i, I read a, a lot about it uh, some thinkers are saying okay this oh, but this was more a moment in the, the in the spring times that everything is changing we, we will have a new better brave world whatever and but uh, just at the beginning we had voices they said okay uh, be careful because maybe if it's starting to get a really strong economic crisis uh, maybe this uh, world will remain the same but worse than before because in uh, difficult times uh, often things are, are going worse so um, yeah that, that that's the point where we are I I hope that this exhibition, this process, this also this this, this kind of really open process and the process we are not knowing what's going on. Uh, we I hope it it can uh, help in some way to understand better this situation. Yeah, to to work on it, to have a feeling for it, and um, I hope that a lot of people can participate can. Uh, can contribute to the project in, in different ways, yeah, uh, the institution by uh, bringing us, borrowing us the furniture, uh, people to send us their um, um, experiences, artists to interpret them. So uh, we hope really that this uh, format, this 
exhibition can be something like, let's call it think tank, uh, about this situation and we can collect a lot of, of inputs that helps us and maybe also to other people or surely me, they, they are going to help to understand better this uh, situation and maybe to work on a, on a, let's call it better future. Fantastic. Good.